Ian. And with us today, Ian, let's make sure we can hear you. Uh, you can hear me. Yes, we can. And then uh, with us today, a special guest, Sarah Strickland, who is the uh, coach at App State. I'm going to stay just uh, safe there. Uh, so, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Let's just do a quick audio check. Um, yeah, I'm here. I can't see Ian, though. Is that okay? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. That's probably good. <laughs> so, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. And everybody else, thank you for being on. Um, and uh, there was some confusion. And it was actually my fault on the title of it. But we got to fix today. <laughs> so I'm uh, really excited, actually, about this presentation on building relationships and goal setting during COVID. I mean, what a fantastic title and very applicable to today. So, Sarah, let's just, uh, first off, thanks again for being here. Uh, you're we know welcome. you're busy, and um, and if you're like me, you're busier now than before all this hit. Um, so, if you don't mind, just maybe share your journey a little bit. And sure, I yeah. Guess you are. So I grew up in Northern Virginia playing soccer and my family was all in soccer. My dad was a coach. My mom was an administrator okay. um, for Virginia Youth Soccer. And then she also uh, worked for Region 1 and grew up playing ODP and just, you know, loving the game and um, played soccer at George Mason University under Jack Sakala. And at the end of my career, he said, I really think you should coach. And I was adamant that that wasn't a good decision. And, um, you know, he asked me, will you at least be a GA? Because I'd gone through and started my coaching licenses. and. Okay. I said, okay, yeah, I can try it. Um, and just fell in love with it, fell in love with mentoring um, young women and, and you know, um, loved the licenses, loved going in and, you know, I even went back and did my premiere after having my third child. Just, you know, loved growing in the game and loved connecting and networking. And um, so, you know, just always found a way back. And um, I had left college coaching when, when I got married because my husband and I wanted to have a family and I just felt like it was a better decision to be on the club side. So I was a, a youth director on the girls side for eight years. And then when my daughter hit kindergarten, um, we agreed that I could, you know, have a, a different routine. And um, so went to Mississippi State and was assistant there. Um, okay. Then um, got the call to come to App and I've been here ever since. So I've been here for um, 10 and a half years and it's been an incredible journey. No, well, thank you for sharing. And you must be busy with the three children. Um, <laughs> Not <you know>. really. <laughs> no, They're a lot older. So I was senior. They, okay. Yeah, I was senior, a junior, and um, one going into ninth grade. So they're they're pretty self sufficient. And no, you know, right. I feel for all those. Uh, you know, I think it's exciting for the coaches that have the young kids that they get to spend time to. I know it's probably a big challenge, but what what an opportunity um, to get to spend time with kids right now. So. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. And, you know, it's really sad about your son not being, did he, he was, did he go through a graduation or was it virtual? So it was my daughter and it was a drive through graduation. It was very unique. Um, I literally, this is probably embarrassing or it is embarrassing, but um, haven't even sent her graduation announcements yet because we didn't know it was actually going to happen. So it happened on Saturday and she turned to me today and said, now can we mail them? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's on my list. <laughs> yeah. Well, very good. Yeah. All right. No, well, thank you. Um, so we've got, you know, a, a good little audience. Samantha is watching from, uh, uh, she says, watching the amazing Sarah from Logan. <laughs> and by the way, she's the one that volunteered you or volunteered you. She did. Her. She uh, did. Yep. Yep. Love That's, her. Yeah, she's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Marco from Portugal. Oh, I'm Portuguese. That's so exciting. How cool is that? And then yeah. we have Casey, uh, Casey Schaefer from Collegeville, Pennsylvania, and Rob is in from Missouri. So those are the awesome. people that have been brave enough to share their names on the chat box. Oh, thanks guys. Thanks for, for coming in. <laughs> so you have a, a very, in my opinion, a timely presentation. Uh, so uh, if you don't mind, I'll just start it and then I'll just let sure. you kind of run with it. And then when I pop my bald head back on or Ian, mm -hmm. uh, you know that maybe there's a, a question in the chat box. So awesome. thank you again. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, so today I was going to talk about building relationships and goal setting during COVID. And I think it's um, it's an opportunity for us to really connect with our players and an opportunity to really help guide them um, in a different way. Um, you know, our sports psychology team at App is pretty amazing. And Dr. Cooper uh, worked with me on a lot of these slides um, to make sure that things that we're doing that we cited well. So um, def it's all on our website if you guys would like to access it and uh, it'll be stored with U.S. Soccer as well, or with United Soccer Association with Vince as well. 
Okay, great. Um, so, you know, my big thing is that when we were going into COVID, it was how are we going to maintain our team culture? Our team culture at App is so incredible and it's so intentional. And so um, for me, it was really important that we found a way to do it. And, and so we really had to reach out to the girls and find out what topics they wanted to talk about and not just how are you and kind of superficial stuff. Uh, we always, you know, ask them what are things you guys are interested in talking about now and, and learning and, and growing with us. Um, we always asked about how they were doing and how their families were doing first, because sometimes even if that's the intent, um, if they weren't in a good space, then like just kind of taking a step back and, and being real about life and, and letting them, um, you know, talk and, and us listen and then really ask permission if, if they wanted some advice or if they just wanted to vent, you know, and I think um, that's how it would have been if they would have walked into our office that sometimes they just want to sit on the couch. So we tried to protect that um, and, and have that authenticity um, to make sure that they knew that that space was still available. Very good. Um, we were very intentional with their time. I think having a balance between too little, like lack of contact and too much of like way too many meetings was important. Um, and also a balance between meeting with the team and meeting individually. So we try to do two team calls a week um, and two individual calls a week just to make sure that they felt seen and heard. Um, we did handwritten cards, which I thought were really, really great uh, that we could spend time really being intentional with our writing and, and getting, having them get something in the mail. Um, especially, awesome. yeah, especially in the last week, being relevant to the world and the events in the United States. Um, we've reached out to our girls to, you know, just give them space to want to talk. And, um, yeah. you know, we don't have solutions, but to know that we support them and, and we, we empathize and we're reaching out to them, I think is really yeah. important. Um, and to their families, too, like reached out to a lot of their parents on um, just, you know, let us know how they're doing and, um, you know, how they feel about coming back. And, and you know, especially with the recent riots and violence and things like, you know, wh where does everybody stand and how is everybody really doing? Um, we always followed up with answers if we didn't have them at the time. So it might have been resources with academic assistance. It might have been mental health. It might have been our sports psychologist. It might have been our sports medicine team. But we always, you know... Uh, told them, you know, if we didn't have the resources or we didn't have the answers that we would find them and get back to them. And I think they really appreciated that. I think they appreciated us being, you know, transparent that we didn't have all the answers, but we were willing to work for them. Very good. Yeah. The handwritten cards. What a, yeah. Casey Schaefer mentions handwritten cards is a wonderful touch. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah and especially, you know, with recruits, because I think there's so yeah. much, um, you know, with the recruits, there's so much that they're not sure about. And, and some of the communication changed and there was a lot of uncertainty. And for them, like especially our seniors, like all of their seasons and career, their high schools ended abruptly. And I watched my daughter go through it. And so it gave me a different lens on on what does that really look like? And these kids that are juniors that were committed on OK, things are going to be different. Like, are, you know, all their seasons when we normally would get to see them and affirm them like we weren't able to do that so um so the handwritten things i think were really appreciated yeah that's good um i always believe that communication is is needs to be clear and concise and that we need to be um using consistent language whether we're in person over the phone you know just so that they know um what to expect from us and in consistency and in, in our demeanor um, I think tone and inflection is important, important, especially on the Zoom and the video chats um, so that they can stay tuned in and, and not kind of get bored. Um, we did a lot of um, team tactics. And so we turned it into conversations rather than just teaching where we would do a freeze clip and we would say, like, what do you That's see? Cool. What are your ideas? And we would let them talk and then we would play the clip out on what actually happened and then go back to, all right, let's look at this again and, and get the, the conversation going. Um, we had expectations set. We told them no cell phones. You know, we want you to be able to see the clips. We want us to not have, have very many distractions. Um, so, and also just, you know, things go, signal go in and out. Um, right. Right. You know, we asked them to validate the person speaking without being kind of ridiculous, <laughs> you know, whether it's smiling or nodding or, or you know, just having affirmative body language. Sure. Um, you know, so we, and we, we talked a lot about thinking about what you're thinking about in, in this time, like what is really on your mind and what are you, you know, what is really and truly are you like thinking about right now and how can we guide it towards the game and how can we guide it towards being a better student of the game? Very good. 
Yeah, um, I thought receiving feedback was huge. We were very, very honest about wanting feedback, um, about valuing what they had to say. Um, you know, we believe that you could learn in a lot of different ways. And when we practice that in our offices, and so we were very intentional um, about trying to make sure that we validated all the visual learners and like took some of that and, and let them speak even more because a lot of times they're a little quieter in training as they're kind of watching um, but let them use kind of their skill set and and lead a little bit differently which i thought was kind of cool um oh, great yeah, we also were very um, intentional about our own journey through and through social distancing on like, hey, we watched this Zoom video on attacking or, or whatever it was. I mean, I've watched so many now and just on these are some ideas that came from it. What do you guys think? And, and let them kind of unpack it with us on what were the ideas and which ones are we going to adopt and which ones are we just excited about but may not fit well with us? Yeah, very good. Um, so our systems, we worked on our team systems. We put together PowerPoints that we had animated so they could actually see players moving together, you know, and shifting cool. as the ball shifted. Um, and like I said, with the visual learners, like uh, you could see the light bulb go off. It was just really, really <laughs> incredible. And that's not necessarily something we would have done or had the time to do, I would say, um, right. because we would have been so busy breaking down our own film. It wouldn't have been how can we take this and make it into something different? Cause we don't have film to break down. Um, so we took the principles of play, we put them into this animated PowerPoint um, and then we included some clips of pro games so they could see it live and then rewind it. And again, that stationary um, snap, that's like snapshot of, um, or snapshot of the moment on what do you see and what are what are your thoughts? And on the defensive side of things, we would do the, the snapshot and we would say, what do you see? And we would talk about the distance vertically, horizontally, like how compact I and mean, all kinds of stuff. And it was really amazing as they started engaging more and, and getting more confident in the language. Um, and that they started working. And the other part was the staff was able to present it like together ahead of time and really practice it. So we learned each other's cadence of speech, which our two um, assistants joined us in February. So we didn't have a lot of time together before COVID hit. So I thought that was really, really critical in us becoming um, a, a new staff together. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, we good. worked with our sports psychology team on goal setting and we do it a lot with our program already. Um, but we really work through the different types of goals. So, um, you know, the outcome goals are obviously the final score and the record and those kind of things. Performance goals, you know, number of goals and assists. Um, process goals are really where we spend a lot of our time. And that's yeah. really on how you can make a difference and how you can um, keep yourself engaged and challenge yourself within games and training. So, you know, example, be it a seven or 11, how can you get in line and beat the defender X number of times? And how is that, you know, how are you challenging yourself to do the three different types? We always talk about the three different types of, of you know, once you get in line and, and how are you going to integrate those into your training to try to force yourself to do more than what you're comfortable with and really get outside that comfort zone? Yeah, no, it's good. Um, so we do the SMART goal method. Yeah. So you guys have it here, but the specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. And we've taught this for a long time, but I think it's a, a really, really wise way to set goals and to make sure that they're, they're being guided in a specific direction. Um, so we always use examples on yeah. I call them unhelpful as opposed to poor, <laughs> but like win conference that, you know, if you lose a game and you know, whatever, it just may not work out and it, it might, you might still have a great season, but that may not be achieved. You know, be a starter is something you don't always have control over. Um, lead the team in goals. You might be leading the team in goals, have an injury, and then all of a sudden um, lose that. And you didn't necessarily fail or, you know, it's just, it, you know, something happened. And we always joke about the survive the stupid pandemic without going insane on the sarcastic goals, right? On how they yeah. don't really help. They're not really helpful. Um, but I think good examples are the earning a starting spot sh by showing up. And the reason why is because a lot of these are your controllable things, right? So yep. you can control being academically el eligible by, by staying on task. Um, emotionally healthy by really focusing on, on what well, we'll talk about micro habits in a little bit. Um, but on, on making sure that you're emotionally consistent and being able to can pass the conditioning test. That's something you can control. You can work out every day and, yep. and, and grind away at it. And, you know, the all conference first team. And again, this is on a daily focus. How are you going to challenge yourself every day? But by, you know, coming in fit basically and challenging myself daily to compete with my most talented teammates and dominating matchups in the game. Like those are ways that we're going to help ourselves improve and challenge ourselves to grow day in and day out. 
Um, the, the one we use that I really like for goal setting is this picture here, and I have it on Google um, Docs if anybody wants it. I'm happy to share it. Uh, but what we do is we have a soccer goal, a strength conditioning goal, an academic goal, and a service or lifestyle goal. Is there a question? Yeah, keep going, and I'll oh. ask you here in a second. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. No, um, sorry. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, so we have our four different areas. I'm a huge person on service. I believe it's really necessary to serve your community. Um, and if people, you know, aren't as invested in that, we have a lifestyle goal. What kind of micro habit do you need to change in order to help yourself achieve those other goals? Um, the way we do it is we go from the bottom to the top. So if you took like the strength and conditioning goal, um, if we said five pull-ups was our goal, then underneath it on like – the first bar, we would write three pull-ups. The next one would write one pull-up. And on the very first one, the very bottom, it would say like one one band with it to assist, right? So it's to help you work towards it and when you completed it and, and hit that milestone. Very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah quick question. Um, so sure. Samantha, uh, is she, her question, maybe we can talk about it afterwards. So maybe to think about or you can answer it now if you want. Is preseason going to look any different this year to make up for time off? Yeah, it's going to have to. That's a good question. And um, it's kind of what we were talking about this morning on um, yeah. on what does the periodization, how has it changed, what does it look like? And the reality is that the sports scientists are really going to have to be involved. Um, you know, we're looking on our end at different um, – opportunities to be able to test them to be able to test like attenuation like weaknesses of their muscles um so we're looking at like a jump mat where we can do a vertical jump and sure. see how much of a deficit there is uh before they start to train and and really look at things that are kind of more than the eye test on like how do they look how are they complaining you know that kind of thing right um so you know to get after like, are they really prepared to try to make sure, and I say try to, because we can never fully prevent injury, um, but to do our best to, to, to be prepared and to yeah. do, you know, yeah. due diligence. And there's a lot of different ways. I know not everybody can buy a jump mat. There's a lot of different um, things you can do, but to really um, be able to evaluate, you know, we're going to be doing daily wellness checks. We're going to be doing daily um, temperature checks and, I mean, we have all kinds of things in place that the girls have been told on, you know, this is going to become the new normal. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's a our, our periodization for preseason. We haven't really laid out yet because we don't know for sure the start date. So we decided to, like, pause on that instead of planning it all out and then yeah. possibly yeah. having a, a wrench in it. So we yeah. decided to just stick with what it's been and what our norm and then adjust our normal cadence. And then um, once they make any announcements, um, we go from there, but we also told the girls, like, you know, the reality is that um, when we were in the spring and obviously COVID hit and it was abrupt, um, but there were teams on the basketball court warming up to play a game and they had to say stop. And with the potential resurgence, we know that that's a possibility that we could be doing something and they could say halt and we have to halt. Um, so that's something that we're very aware of. Mm. Very good. Very good. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't have a question yet. So, um, oh, there's like a bunch of. Should I ask these that are in here? Or I have a question, Sarah. Okay. Um. So, Casey, you said challenges COVID with recruiting. Um. It's a lot, actually. It, it's um. Normally, our freshmen get here in July, and I think they were looking forward to it. You know, I know that that was kind of their plan. So, I think. Um, you know, missing out on their spring high school seasons and their spring club seasons. Like, I think, you know, the app not, you know, to not have an opportunity to touch a ball, I think they lose some confidence and they're already going from yeah. where they were relied on to uncertainty. So that's kind of, that's part of the reason why we started teaching the team principles um, where they could start learning things that they would be taught in preseason. Um, so, yeah, I think it's made a huge impact. I think it's been really hard on the 21s and I think it's been extremely hard on the 22s. Um, that normally would be getting calls in two weeks and, and they're not going to. Um, so there's probably some some fear and some apprehensiveness, but the reality is they're all in the same boat and they just need to be reassured that like we're, we're all there together. Like no one's, you know, in a different situation. Yeah. 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 yeah I was, I was going to ask that question. Uh, so Casey's all over it. So I was going to ask you yeah. about the incoming freshman and it's great. Um, so Rob has a, has a question. Uh, are Zoom meetings in small group or with the whole team? 
So we do it both. Um, okay. Some of them are the entire team and then we do little breakout rooms depending on. So we'll do for our tactical ones, we'll do um, the entire group will teach something and they'll go into our breakout rooms and the staff will be in each of the rooms and we'll break down, you know, for those positions, you know, a little more detailed on the um, on whatever the video clip was. So we, we do it both ways. Um, and then we do individual too. So some of them are small group by position. Some of them are with their accountability group. So we have accountability groups set up that our girls are, um, there's like four in each accountability group and, and they like really rely on one another. Um, our team was already set up in families, but these are kind of a step beyond that. So like our families eat dinner together during preseason and, and during the season we'll have family dinner that they at restaurants will sit together. Um, but we broke it down a step further and said, okay, accountability groups this summer, um, you know, we tried to keep them small so they could be honest with one another and real and vulnerable. Um, but they're in groups of four and they meet weekly and then we jump in and, um, you know, we, we try to do that so that regardless of if they're the quieter one or if they're louder one, we try to split up the personality so no one would dominate the room. Um, mm -hmm. But we yeah. try to give space for everyone's style. Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. And Rob's got a follow up question. Looks like. Yeah. So um, and by the way, so you mentioned something that made me think of something. I mean, people buy in what they help create. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, when when you do your Zoom meetings, do you also. Mm -hmm look to take this time to ask input from players that are normally quiet at training. Uh, and do you find more players finding their voice with Zoom and more confident and giving feedback that will benefit you once you get back? That's a, that's a great question. Um, so two things on that. One, I am huge on scanning and that's why I was asking if I'd be able to see people. Uh, my girls know that I'll be scanning and if they look like they're checking out, I'll be like, so what are your thoughts? <laughs> I'll usually send them a text or like a chat in the, um, in the thing to let them know like, okay, I'm about to call on you because you look like you're checking out a little bit. Stand, you know, stand up, stretch, whatever you need to do. Um, but I, I always call on the ones that are quieter because they're usually a little bit more insightful because they're thinking about it as opposed to talking about it. Right. Um, right. So providing them space. Um, and I do, I do believe it's going to, um, I do believe it's going to help them with their confidence when they get to campus. Um, I do believe that people are going to learn to give space to people that are a little bit quieter and, mm. and listen. Yeah. Um, so to, <laughs> oh, thanks Rob, <laughs> uh, to really give space to listen and to hear that input. Cause I think, a lot of times those quieter people really have insightful things to say that we need to yeah. um, pause for. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Barker, are you on the other, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, and I don't know if Sarah can hear me, so maybe Vince, you can oh, too. I can't hear him. She can't hear you, so I'll oh, have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and you have to apologize to Sarah because this is probably the hardest question I've asked of anybody in the 90 webinars, so Warner, it's coming. Okay, so he said that he's going to apologize in advance because this is one of the toughest questions he's asked in all of our 90 plus webinars that we've done. So he just wanted to give you a forewarning. So. Okay. All so right. if Sarah's willing to answer the question, obviously her athletes have had this challenging situation and they've had the additional challenge, right? Because the men's team um, mm -hmm. is not going to re resume for next season. And I wonder if she's had to deal with any additional stress because of broader issues within the athletic department. So basically, um, because he's just wondering if you're gonna have any more issues to kind of deal with uh, due to the men's program being dropped, right? Mm -hmm. And is that gonna cause any more uh, stress or um, problems for you? It's hard. Um, they're our closest friends. They are like our brothers for real. I mean, that's not even a, like lightly said at all. Um, Jason, Brad, Maddie, they, I mean, I've walked with them for years now and um, I've had a bunch of the men's soccer alumni reach out to me. I mean, I've had the team over for dinner at my house. I've put notes in their lockers for years, um, watched their, as many games as I could and we host tailgates at every one of their matches. And so our alumni, we had a meeting last night and they were, they were just devastated. And yeah. I mean, obviously not to the level of the men, but, um, but yeah, I think, um, I, I think the, the hardest part for me is that I always 
um, preach that having the men alongside us is so important for like, I go watch their training. I go watch what Jason's doing. I go watch their games. Like the girls go watch. We talk about it. We show the guys clips from our games and ask for advice. They do the same with us. And so I always tell people that I think it's such an advantage to have a men's program yeah. um, to be alongside and to grow with and, um, and to lean on. And, and I just like, I, I yes, it, it will be a huge, huge loss, a huge change. And um, it's, it's um, I, I'm, I'm still like not sure how we're gonna navigate it. And it's just gonna, like we always train right after them. So we'd always see them as they were cooling down and have some conversation. And um, so it's um, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, Ian asked because, you know, it, it's gonna, you know, just acknowledge it's gonna be strange. It's gonna be yeah. tough. It's, to um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I've never been part of this. I've been part of a lot of things in coaching over 20 years. Um, I've never experienced this and it's, um, it's, I've, um, you know, yeah. Jason's wife is one of my very best friends. So this is, um, yeah. this is hard for sure. So let's change gears and thank you, by the way, that was a, that was yeah. a tough question. Um, Marco, and I don't want to keep you too much longer cause you've been very gracious with your time. Sure. Um, Marco from Portugal is asking uh -huh. if a player doesn't achieve those goals, readapt or release from the team, is it on base of scholarship? So, no, no, it's not like that at all. So this, I feel like is, um, this is, uh, um, this is for them. And we, we work with them every semester on resetting their goals. And so yep. this is on, and part of goal setting is reevaluating. Like sometimes we don't get it right. And sometimes it's too easy and sometimes it's too hard. And um, so, you know, for us, um, we look at it and we, we set them and we, or not, we set them, they set them, they come in, we help them kind of narrow them down a little bit and help them with the steps. Um, and then we go from there and then at yeah. the end we look at it on, did they achieve it? And if they didn't, do they want to stick with it and try to maintain that as their goal for the next season? Yeah. Um, or, um, are they looking at, um, you know, adjusting that goal. So that, that has nothing to do with retention or I, I'm not a big person on cutting. I've cut two yeah. players in 11 years. I'm not very good at it if yeah. you ask any of them. Um, so yeah, so no, this is just to help them and to help them with their journey on on the different areas and, and to stay balanced. I think the service yeah. goal is huge to keep that balance in their life of giving back to the community. And you just get so much more out of it than than you're really giving and the relationships yeah. and the memories. And so you know, to help them maintain that, I think is good too. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. Let's we'll ask one more question. Cause again, we're, we're uh, you're giving us a lot of time here, which is wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Casey's asked, uh, is asking, is there still uncertainty on the academic side of the school? And is there a firm date when classes will resume? And if you don't know, you don't know, I guess. No classes start August 17th and they've right. been pretty firm about that. So um, I know that, um, they've they've ended school they've gotten rid of fall break so that they can end school yeah. a little bit sooner so that they'll be able to end at thanksgiving which i think is smart because yeah. that's like when flu season is starting to hit and so to let them go home it's also extremely expensive for those kids to go home for thanksgiving come back be here for like two weeks not even and yeah. then go home again so I, I appreciate that as far as to save money for families as well um for yeah. travel yeah i agree i yeah i mean plus december i mean you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's just it's a tough time for everybody and your point about you know airfares and all that yeah it's much yeah better. it's a lot yeah it's yeah a lot so uh, your question rob about the games it hasn't happened yet but like we haven't been given our true starting date nor have we been given the full green light on what's going to happen so you know I, um i think division two has been pretty proactive about let's let's um reduce and and try to make this reasonable our um, Sunbelt has restructured so like our um, schedule looks different as far as what we would have played. Um, but it's, um, you know, we're, we're not going to be flying to Texas like we would have this year. So, um, mm. but I'm, but I don't know kind of what that's going to look like. I, I'll be surprised if we're allowed to play our full 20 games though. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. even, even from a safety standpoint on the number of times we're departing campus and interacting with other people and then coming back. So um, yeah. but we'll see. my daughter's going to play division two volleyball at, at Belmont, um, Abby and Charlotte oh, yeah. right in Belmont. And so, um, 
yeah, so they called me when the season got reduced and and I started scurrying like did I miss, did I miss an email? <laughs> um, but you know, it's uh it's it's something yeah. that I think is is never a done deal, you know. Yeah, thank you. Um Boss, I don't know if can she hear you? No, I just thank Sarah for her time and, and thanks Samantha for the lead because it's nice to have Sarah on. And um, it's impressive how much care and concern for the athletes. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and welcome. we'll wrap it up here because you've given us 15 minutes of extra time, bonus time. <laughs> um, so, and Ian just, yeah, graciously just said thank you so much. And also thank you did a shout out to Samantha Snow for connecting us. And She's um, wonderful. Yeah, oh, she's amazing. We call her a queen, right? She's she is. A queen. She is a queen. Yes. Um, but... Uh, no, thank Sam you. actually did a Zoom call with us the other day, and she was in the hospital, like with contractions. So to give you a queen, sorry, yeah. Sam, I yeah. don't know if HIPAA allows that, but like that's how much of a queen that woman is. Uh, she's amazing. <laughs> she's a rock star. But uh, and she she helps me out a lot on these uh, these things to keep me sane. So, but thank you so much, and You're welcome. Thank you for your willingness to share the deck, and anybody yeah. that wants it, just email me and. Uh, thank you. And, and, you know, God bless the rest of the way and be safe and hope, uh, yeah, hope the season is a success. And, but more importantly that, you know, everybody's safe. So thank you. you guys take care. Thank you so much for having me. And no, I wish you guys you. all the best. Thank you for all you do for all the coaches at all levels. It's really, really incredible. Super grateful. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. You're welcome. All, all right. right. Take care guys. All right.